Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat pagi. Welcome to Asia E University, and uh, we have a webinar session today for Vice Vice Chancellors Forum Number Two, emerging stronger from the COVID pandemic, uh, the new learning experience. So today, the uh, outbreak of a COVID nineteen pandemic in early twenty twenty has become a major disruption to higher education institution globally cancelling in person classes and moving to online only instruction this pandemic has significantly altered nearly every aspect of higher education's life from admission to enrollment and graduation the concerns are also aggra aggravated due to financial future of the higher institution in a time of considerable uh, financial instability both in the form of unexpected costs and potential reductions in the revenue. As the situation continues to develop, this webinar is taking an active role in addressing both immediate and long-term challenges related to the outbreak and its impact on high This webinar forum, we are pleased to have a panel of three heads of universities from Malaysia, Bangladesh and Philippines to share their first-hand experience in mitigating the impact of this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic and their, on the higher institutions, and to share lessons learned and how they have emerged stronger due to learning. Uh, please welcome Prof. Uh, Dr. Tite Kawa Abdurrahman, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Asia University. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Dr. Mahmoud Pukhan, founder and chairman of Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. Dr. Caroline Marion Enriquez, president, Our Lady of Fatima University, Philippines. In terms of procedures, the modern I shall present the same issues to the three speakers, followed by their responses and then question and answer. The participant can post their questions online and they will be answered during question and answer sessions. The subsequent questions from the from me shall be addressed to the speaker on a rotational basis. After all the speakers have given their views, there shall be 10 minutes question and answer to summarize the topic for today. Okay, my first uh, question, which is posed to Malaysia, uh, Prof. Uh, Malaysia followed by uh, uh, Dr. Mamad Sabu and uh, Dr. Caroline. The first question, most countries are entering into its one year anniversary of combating COVID-19 and the country higher education institution uh, continue to be impacted. The higher education institution have been forced to close their campuses and enrollment has shrunk. To what extent COVID-19 has impacted your university in terms of enrollment and how has the university overcome this loss of revenue streams? Prof. Uh, Tite? Okay. Um, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Xiao, uh, for inviting me for this uh, webinar sessions yeah? and uh, being a moderator for this webinar. And I would like to welcome Dr. Caroline and Dr. Saburhan. Uh, for our second Vice Chancellor webinar. So, um, as Prof. Xiao has mentioned, uh, co the COVID-19 pandemic has come into the second year. Yeah, and, and of course, um, AEU uh, is not, um, I mean, is, uh, AEU is also Im impacted due to this COVID. Yeah, however, uh, since um, the establishment of AEU is uh, dedicated for online learning, so um, in terms of um, the operation yeah, and also the teaching and learning uh, is not uh, impacted that much you know, because we are ready with the learning management system and our content are tailored for uh, online learning. Yeah. Um, so in terms of our process and procedures and our uh, teaching and learning activities, uh, it, it does not really impact that much. But of course, uh, when it comes to the um, economic um, point of view, yeah, um, AEU is not being uh, it's not exempted you know, from from being impacted by the uh, economic point of view. 
Okay, so uh, due to um, COVID-19 yeah, has impacted uh, our students uh, economically because our student um, about, I think, uh, majority of our student, yeah, all majority of our student, about 95%, uh, at least, they are working adults. So, uh, indirectly, uh, they are uh, very much impacted. Yeah, some of them, they... Uh, their, their salaries have been reduced. Um, some of them, they have even been laid off. Yeah, but um, as a university, um, we are being empathy to them. Yeah, so um, we are trying to give support. Yeah, in terms of uh, reduction in fees and uh, what we call uh, AAU case. Yeah, and. Um, to this is to ensure that you know um, COVID nineteen will not uh, affect the progress of their studies. So in terms of new students, yeah, um, we we try to reach out to them, yeah, because we uh, to us we 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 find that um, although it is now uh, we are in the difficult situation, yeah, but um, this is actually the time, yeah, when uh, we can improve yeah so we uh, our marketing uh, team yeah is uh, promoting yeah using the digital uh, marketing um, avenue uh, largely yeah actively to reach out to the new students yeah because we see that now uh, people are going towards digital yeah uh, even buying uh, household goods uh, grocery everything goes to uh, goes to digital so um, our marketing team yeah has used extensively uh, digital marketing to promote uh, our programs and uh, it is uh, successful actually yeah we uh, the number of new students recruited uh, by our sales and marketing uh, we notice has increased uh, be, uh, partly uh, is due to the digital marketing and I would say partly due to uh, our mode of learning which is uh, fully online yeah and um, which means that student yeah the uh, their working life are not infected uh, yeah, not 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 affected yeah and uh, with the incentive that uh, we give away to the students yeah so it attract them uh, to join uh, our programs okay because um, they they see that um, this is the time yeah for them to uh, improve themselves yeah but of course uh, with the with the uh, economic difficulties yeah but um, with the uh, support that uh, AAU give to the students and also new students and government as well our government as well give uh, quite a number of uh, monetary supports yeah, to the to the um, nation yeah so um, this is to ensure yeah that uh, although we are facing this uh, pandemic yeah but in terms of human capital development will not be affected yeah so this is what we see yeah although we are impacted somewhere somehow yeah but um uh, due to the in, the incentive of the uh, given by the university, incentive given by the government, um, and the support that we give to the student, our mode of learning, uh, uh, we still get uh, quite um, a good number of students, and we can retain our existing students. Yeah, so um, I would say that uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, AEU uh, is, is still doing well, yeah, despite the COVID um, situation, yeah, and we always tell our student, you know, if we want to jump higher, yeah, we have to squat down, meaning that uh, maybe we have to start from bottom, yeah, maybe we this, this is the downtime, but we can jump higher as compared to if we jump when we are standing, okay, the our jump will not as high as uh, the height of our jump is not be as high as if we jump from squatting down. Yeah, so uh, we give a lot of support to our to our students, motivations, and also uh, we try to improve. We improve our services. Yeah. So 
uh, Alhamdulillah, this is to make our student uh, happy, yeah, and uh, their study will not be uh, affected. So I think that's that's from me, uh, Prof. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Prof. Tite. Uh, Dr. Mawat Sabu Khan, uh, to what extent COVID-19 has impacted your university in terms of enrollment and how has your university overcome the loss of revenue streams? Uh, uh, Dr. Sabu Khan? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Siu. As uh, Professor Titiki has already mentioned, that few of the points, so I'm quite agree with her because uh, this is such a pandemic. It is not affect to any specific issue. It is the first time I, I must say that the education sector, all of the sector is disrupted and all of the sector is affected. And no doubt it is not uh, limited in the uh, Philippines or limited to the Malaysia or US. Uh, just yesterday, our, one of this uh, just article, I just uh, read it down because it was mentioned that Bangladesh is now in a very good situation, but we cannot uh, commit it or we cannot confirm that it will be continued because maybe Tomorrow or maybe after a few hours, there is one person will be coming from the affected country and then again it will be spreading. So that is why I should say that it is really a great signal for all of us and to give us a great lesson. And as Professor Titik has already mentioned, it is not only the university affected, our student is also affected because the lot of cases the student the guardian, those who are the earnings source, they are also affected severely. A lot of cases their business is already going to be shut down and some of them they lose that they lost their job. And at the same time, you know, the few of the students, if I'm not wrong, around 20 to 30 percent students, they are survived, they are continuing their education through the part-time job. Someone they are doing some tuition, someone doing some other job. But these sorts of students is also affected seriously. And considering that one, our university also took initiative to give the almost very close to close to the four million US dollar. We give the subsidy, we give the various sorts of scholarship wherever to the pandemic time. And at the same time, we also realize that a lot of the students do not have the digital device. That they know that sometimes they are already using the normal phone. So, but as a continuing education system, we also realize that our, our a number of students, they do not have the laptop. So we also took initiative, this pandemic, we also imported more than 3,000 laptops and we already distributed 3,000 laptops among our students due to this pandemic time. And it was also giving a very good uh, mileage, I should say, to continue to their education. And also we talked with the mobile operator for enhancing the data. Uh, uh, you know, the da data is also one of the key component because as a, as you, we know that the earlier the students are coming to the classes, they are joining to the classes in the class in front of the teacher. But now they are uh, participating through the internet. So we also try to talk with the mobile operators to speed up their data facility. And also, as uh, Dr. Titik is also mentioned, because the digital marketing and online activities, everything we are already spreading. And I'm sure that the uh, HRE University is already, you are focusing the online education. But again, I should say that in Daphne International University, we are not fully online based, but this pandemic is also giving us a great opportunity to move 100% online. Because our teacher was uh, in the preliminary time, I think they were very reluctant, but we took a lot of initiative. We give them the training. We already continuously organize a lot of the webinar training. And sometimes I should say that the, maybe in the 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, uh, 10 p.m., the, our teacher are joining this various sorts of training for enhancing or or cope up with the technology. So with this, all of those facility, uh, I must say that the, our our university is now, honestly speaking, is a very much strong position considering the online education because few months back, but two months back, we have made one survey and we sent the one survey to all of our students because our university campus in respect of the physical facility, we have the big campus. So we thought that maybe in safety and security, we will be open our university for few of the students, those who are interested to come to the university. We were very surprised. This survey, we found that only only 12% students are interested to come to the campus. 98% students, they told that no, we are enjoying the education through this uh, online or uh, blending learning. So they, this is the hybrid. So I, I, I'm really surprised because I thought that maybe 40 to 50% students will show the interest to come to the campus. So this is a, another era, I should say, that the new technology is already adopted by the student, by the teacher, and even the parent. I should say the parents is also very much showing their confidence to cope up with the technology. Because a lot of the parents, we did, we organized the parents' uh, conference also virtually. 
So the lot of the parents is also uh, participated, and we asked them. Our teacher directly asked the parents what they feel, and they also feel that look, I am seeing that my son, my daughter is already. They are very happy to join in the online uh, class. So I think that it will be good uh, until and unless the situation come to the normal position, they can continue this online education. So a lot of a lot of uh, technological development is also done between this time, and I should say that the, our university. Uh, we already involve a lot of technology, as uh, Dr. Titi has also mentioned that uh, students now they also much habituated to uh, digital marketing, documentary, and a lot of this plugin. I'm sure that you know that due to cause of technological development, a lot of tools is available. But student is also much better than the teacher. And at the same time, we also organize just from uh, third uh, February to until today, we organize the one virtual admission fair. You know that. Our admission is uh, going on, just it is started. So this time, I think it is not pos possible to organize the physical admission fair. So we organize one virtual admission fair. It's called the Educate, Educate Admission Fair. And our all of these organizations were very surprised because every day there's a lot of students are taking admission through this uh, virtual admission fair. So, you know, the virtual admission fair, we also utilize the virtual reality. We also utilize the 3D effect. So these sorts of development also never can be happen earlier if this pandemic is not coming and hitting to our country or the whole, whole world. And also we should uh, we should also mention that between this time we also recruited our faculty. You know that the almost more than 100 faculty we recruited and all of the procedure also we organized through the digital. That is virtually and virtually we already conducted the class, virtually conducted their uh, training, their uh, interview and a all, all, lot of things we already organized virtually. And at the same time, I should say uh, that we also organize in this pandemic time is the teaching apprenticeship fellowship. 47 uh, teacher, 47 young teacher joined in this teaching apprentice fellowship and it was a one month training and it was a very uh, I should say the very rigid training because a lot of the training tools and a lot of the components is already giving them a training between this time one month and whole situation and whole organization, whole training is also done virtually and I'm sure that the, the participants, those who already uh, uh, recruited and already selected this 46 among these uh, more than 1000 participants, 47, uh, we selected this TA at F, that is Teaching Apprentice Fellowship. So these sorts of activities are giving us the more confidence because it is, uh, we already talked that and we everyone we know that it's the new normal. We already know that the physical, that is physical and digital education is now termed as a physical. And of course, uh, I should say that the tech-based entrepreneurship is also very popular as Professor Titi has also mentioned that e-commerce is going to be the very popular. I'm sure that I'm, I, I'm sure that the 40 percent people now they are habituated about the online uh, trading e-commerce and this is also one of, another opportunity I should say the people those who are also thinking that uh, they do not have the enough of fund to start their business or due to this pandemic they already started their business through the online uh, selling the online activity and again uh, i i must say that uh, look this is a very good signal this is a very good breakthrough and we are not prepared earlier everyone we are really puzzled for the first one or two months of course i should say that uh, our university is also first two months especially the march and april we are really very puzzled we are confused that what should be the, our next destination first of we thought that maybe it will be 15 days maybe it will be one month but after one month and after two months, we are realized, you know, it will be continued and we don't know how long it will be. And now I hope that everyone will be agree with me that uh, the situation maybe will be will be OK after a few months. But we should carry this pain maybe five years, maybe 10 years. And I don't know that what will be the next. Maybe after five years, there will be another pandemic. I hope that God will save us. But again, I think this is a, another great signal that the education system also need to be think now in other way. The education system now need to think with the technological development. And of course, we should not think the earlier system that students will come to the class and they will enjoy the lecture and they will just cope up with the present scenario. So anyway, I hope that uh, considering all of the aspect, uh, it is really 
uh, a great lesson for academician. It is a great lesson for our university management. It is a great lesson for the student, parents, and of course, as Dr. Titi has also mentioned, the government is also took a lot of initiative to give the uh, some stimulus package, some subsidy. So government is also need to be careful about any future pandemic or future very odd situation. They must keep the earlier precaution how they should uh, overcome this challenge. So thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Sahuk Khan, and uh, we pass on the same question to Dr. Caroline. Dr. Caroline. Yes. Good morning, Dr. Shaw, uh, yes. Professor Titik, and my friend Dr. Sabur. Um, we all know that when the pandemic hit the country, I mean the entire world, nobody expected the extent of the pandemic as well as the duration. So initially, when it hit us, um, we were making plans for short term. We were hoping that with our plan A, we would be able to have our classes soon because our government started on a full loan lockdown as early as March. So we thought that, okay, by April, perhaps we could start our classes, but apparently it did not work out. By April, we were still on lockdown. So what we did in the university was to have four iterations of plans. You have a plan A for one, one, one month lockdown, and then another iteration for a two month lockdown, and so forth and so on. And then we realize that it's not going to be over soon. It's going to be with us for a long time. So we were lucky that at the time um, we had our lockdown, in the university, we already had our learning management system. But our learning management system at the time was just being used as a supplement for in case classes would be called off, then our learning management system would kick in so that the students can continue with their classes. So what happened was um, we were towards the end of the semester. Luckily, um, the government said that, okay, you can just close the semester and it's up to the, each university on how you could um, end the semester. Either you give them full grades or you just do a catch up later on. So we decided to do our um, computations for the grades based on existing um, class standing. And then we moved on and we started planning. How do we move on from a totally traditional um, way of didactics? Uh, we, we, yeah, we had our digitalization, but we're not like AEU that everything was delivered online. Um, pretty much um, 90, 100% of our didactics were done physically on campus. So when it hit us, it was really a big realization, but thankfully we, we had, like what I said, we had our LMS. So it was difficult. Um, at that time, we just finished computing for our KPIs, our key performance um, indicators. And we had high hopes for the year. In, in fact, we had high hopes for the next five years. So when it hit us sometime in March, we knew we had to recalculate and we had to change our KPIs because we knew that um, it's a big impact on enrollment. So what we did was we lowered our targets and we tried to drive enrollment and we tried to get the students to embrace online teaching, considering in the Philippines, everybody was um, traditional in terms of, I want to go to the campus, I want to be with my friends, I want to see them. So it, it was difficult at first, admittedly, to get them on board. So we had to do a lot of um, digital marketing. We had to do a lot of convincing. And then on top of that, we realized that we also had to recalibrate our curriculum and that meant um, making adjustments so that number one um, we deliver synchronously what's only needed and what's only basic and only the foundations and the rest will have to be delivered asynchronously because we have to be mindful of the internet connection and the internet um, capabilities of our students so we had to transform and accelerate our transformation um, fully online. So when we did that also, we had to consider a lot of things. First, we had to make sure that we only um, carve out everything that's unessential with regards to running a university. 
So we had to temporarily put on hold some of our construction plans. Although at the time we were constructing two buildings, we decided that we continue on with our two new buildings because it was 80% um, completed. So we have two new buildings now, uh, no one's using them, but we're looking forward to the time that perhaps uh, in due time, we would be able to go back to our campuses. Secondly, we also had to identify um, essential employees, essential faculty members who could go to the campuses because the government was very strict. At, um, it depends on your classification, on whether you're under a general quarantine or a modified quarantine, because if, we, if your location is at a very strict um, quarantine status, then very few of your faculties, or very few, in fact, very few employees could go on campus. So we were operating mainly from our homes, mainly from where we are, and we tried to mitigate um, the, in, the decrease in enrollment by doing heavy, um, heavy digital marketing. We relied on Facebook, we relied on Twitter, we relied on a lot of online capabilities just to bring in the students. And then secondly, we also had to make sure that, um, we also had to make sure that our um, technology was also um, increased or made better. So we had to pour in a lot of resources to number one, strengthen the security of our um, digital infrastructure. We had to also make sure that our teachers are very trained with regards to the use of our learning management system. Although we had it earlier on, we had to um, retrain them and make sure that they know all the functionalities as well as the strengths of our learning management system. And at the same time, we also had to teach our students. Because imagine coming from a scenario where every day you would be in class listening to your teacher, now you have to listen from your homes and you have to know how to manipulate all the um, functionalities in our learning management system, as well as how to pay attention. At the same time also, we had to um, increase our online resources and make sure that everything that we did, everything that we put in our, well, we used Canvas, everything that we used in our learning management system is supported by good um, online resources. So it's really very difficult. And um, we had to make a lot of adjustments, both internally and externally, and we had to make a lot of computations on how we could mitigate the impact of um, lesser number of students, but at the same time, still being able to deliver quality um, education at all times. So there's a lot of teacher training that went on and a lot of management of the resources so that we're able to make sure that um, as we were delivering uh, online education, we're also very flexible at the same time. But there's also a group of students um, especially coming from the senior high school students of um, our university who did not even have any um, budget for online resources. So, so for that particular segment, we had to what they call um, learning packets. We had to print learning packets. So for about maybe 4,000 of our students in senior high school in our six campuses, we had to deliver our learning packets physically. So at certain points in time, the parents of the senior high school students would come to the campus. And in the end, we realized that we probably printed about 9 million pages of our learning packets just so we could deliver it. So in a way, it's also very difficult because we were delivering partly um, through learning packets for a senior high school and fully online for our teachers. And at the same time, we also had to consider at what point in time can we help our students, especially with regard to certain skills that can only be enhanced for a face-to-face -face encounter. So we were figuring out that perhaps maybe come second semester, we would be able to have our students back on campus. So right now, that's where we are. We're trying to work on how we could retrofit our campuses 
And I'd like to think that um, Our Lady of Fatima University was one of the trailblazers in um, making sure that our students can eventually return to the campus safely and so that they could um, gain confidence back into the system. Although there's a lot of learnings that we could um, get from this experience, one of that would be um, the acceleration towards a digital transformation. If it were not for the pandemic, I think the acceptance of digital learning would still be very uh, at the background of most institutions. But because of what happened, it opened up a lot of opportunities, not only because of the pandemic, but it also opened our minds about the possibility of how great um, education could be, even if it's done online, and how we could manage online delivery in a better way and in a massive scale so that it's not only acceptable to all, but it's also very um, successful. Students learn as we deliver their education online because we have managed to find out the correct balance between um, synchronous mm -hmm. learning which is when you have your internet and asynchronous learning um, when you have to do your assessments back at home. So we're looking forward to how we could deliver um, education both using both modalities, um, be as flexible as we can. Uh, if we need to deliver it online further or still or for a longer time, we will. But if there's an opportunity where we could do um, partly limited face-to-face, -face, then we should also do it because we also believe that students should have some sort, some should have their hands-on experience. As the sooner, the, at the sooner time, the better, because most of our programs are health programs, and the skills for those um, certain programs have to be met. So um, thank you for the thank, time uh, to be able to explain. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Caroline. We have uh, more or less three questions, but I will put the questions, I mean, embed this, this question together with the second question that we uh, have uh, to uh, Dr. Maud Sabu, you shall answer first. Many higher education institutions have been forced to close their campuses and has to immediately shift their classes to fully e uh, online. How prepared is your university in embracing this unprecedented new learning from the management, staff, and students' perspective? And the additional uh, question is uh, particularly focusing to the science subject. Uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Mark Sabu? Unmute, please. This is the another new normal. This is the another new normal. We have to unmute. Okay? So thank you. So first of all, I, as I already we agreed and we mentioned that uh, university though you already started some preliminary activities earlier than pandemic. They were doing very well. I should say like Asia University, you are already in the online activities. So definitely within few days, uh, you can take your 100% preparation. So luckily, uh, definitely international universities also, we were very much aware about these sorts of activities. And earlier, I think six years back, we already implemented this online education, but it was optional. As Dr. Carolina has already mentioned, it was optional. It was not giving the more emphasis. Uh, but again, I should say that the, luckily when we started these uh, online activities, as we already have the infrastructure, we already have the resources, we already have a lot of these uh, good uh, teachers, those who are already uh, eagerly or they are very much expert in this area. And again, I should say that as uh, we also engage in the Asian some online activities before this pandemic. So this is giving, giving us the more confidence when we started this digital class. And at the same time, I should say that uh, the, a science class those needs the physical lab facility. So the lab facilities is also we introduced some, you know, the, some software like, you know, the artificial intelligence. We are also using the... Uh, virtual reality, also there some stimulating software. So it is true that physical activities cannot be replaced by this uh, online class, online lab classes. But we are trying to cover up. And as already I mentioned, that few places we also open our lab. So with, with safety and security, our lab is open, and still our lab is open because all of our lab instructors they are already 
uh, managing is through the online and also the physical activities because uh, I'm sure that as um, it is really tough to be overcome through this uh, uh, online activities only the physical life facility and also uh, as uh, the Carolina Par also mentioned because uh, due to cause of this pandemic is and technological involvement I think we revise rubrics three to four times you know and because. Uh, this pandemic is also giving us another opportunity that each and every student can share their feelings through this forum. Because there is an active forum that students can easily share their feelings, how they like to know what is their barrier and what problem they are facing. So what happened, we can easily identify the teacher, how much they are active and they are proactive and effective with the student because they are, this was earlier we cannot identify. So this is a very, I should say, the very good opportunity for our university also now to define that the teacher performance, which we call the, we develop the analytical tools. So through this analytical tool, we can identify the teacher performance. And honestly speaking, we every month through this system, we identify whose who, who performance is 100%, 90%, 80%, 70%. So there is a lot of KPI, a lot of rubrics we already involved. And it is very easy to identify through the technology, which earlier we cannot do, I think. And also, you see that, as I already mentioned, that our teaching apprentice fellowship, that every teacher, it was mandatory. They must have to look up at the 100 classes, online classes, providing by the other teacher. And they can assess this among these 100 courses. Who is per teacher is the best teacher and whose lecture style is good and which content is good why the student is only feeling uh, good about this among these hundred classes so again uh, we also developed some tools in admin hr also you know that uh, due to this pandemic sometimes they are doing their uh, office from the home so it is very tough to identify their performance so we already developed one smart book it's called the smart board. There is all department has the specific board. So like computer science and engineering, they have their own board. The department had in the morning, they're coming to the world. Hi, hello, how is everything going? So then teacher is, okay, I have this class, I have this class. I need this one, this one. So through this board, I think everybody is effectively participated. It looks like they are doing office physically. So these sorts of tools also we develop between this pandemic time. And again, uh, you, I, I, I should say that our university has also developed these two tools. One is mentoring, monitoring system. This, so every teacher is must they have to monitor, they have to uh, counseling, mentoring to all students through the system. So every teacher is around 40 students, they are mentoring. So through the system, our dean and our department head, our associate dean and associate head, very easily they can identify this how how they already organize this mentoring to the student and also we develop this pandemic time another beautiful solution is dropout student you know that's due to pandemic as uh, dr titik has already mentioned that some of the students they lose their financial capability so what happened our teacher and our management very easily they can find out the dropout student so very easily we can track one and each student why they drop out and even that the system can identify if any student losing their financial capability, system can earlier give me the alert that this student financial problem is going on because he is not coming to the classes, he is irregular, his result is going down. So these sorts of lot, lot of indication will be coming through the system. So we can take the proper precaution before going to the dropout by the student. So these sorts of lot of solution already we developed between this time. And I must say that it was impossible for us to develop these sorts of lot of system. I should not say, I must say that the only the car is now driving by the driver. The rest of the things is driving by the system. Even the approval, recruitment, you know, the everything. I think that my one of my HR, HR had told the sir, in midnight, 12 o'clock call, I send the one approval. In the morning wake up, I saw that the, it is already approved. Because the six person was approval authority. But morning when he, he wake up, she saw that the, all of the approval is done. So that, that is the, uh, and she mentioned that earlier it took 15 days, one month, because maybe vice chancellor is not in the chair, maybe provost chancellor is going to the another job, maybe honorable dean is not uh, active. So, so it takes a lot of time and she needs to go to the physically or she needs to talk by telephone, sir, uh, you need to send her this file. But now I don't need to call anyone. So these sorts of lot of technological development is already done between this pandemic. 
And lastly, I should say that the, uh, in, as uh, Dr. Karanina mentioned, then we are also lucky because we took one another initiative. We have a lot of the under construction building when the pandemic is started. So one month it was stopped, one, one and a half months it was stopped. After one and a half months, everyone is giving me suggestions that we should stop it in the pandemic. No, this is a great opportunity for us because we don't know how long it will be continued. So very frankly speaking, three 10 story building we completed between this pandemic time. So people, those who already visited our campus before pandemic, I think if, you, if they visited now, they will not realize that what is this development is going on. It's an unbelievable development is going on. So this is another opportunity because when the class is on, it was really tough to do the all sorts of construction. But now there was no class, there are no students. So full swing, we are keeping all of our construction on. So this is, I should say that the, sometimes it's the opportunity because within this one year, whatever construction, whatever development we already developed in our campus, I think it may take five years if the pandemic was not happening. So, Anyway, at the same time, the lab facility, you know, the lab facility also needs some time to organize properly. And as physical class, we are also keeping some open and at the same time, some development activities also we are keeping open. So considering this pandemic, I'm sure that uh, we are trying to address the physical lab and also the technological development. So again, with all of the distinguished guests, I agree that these sorts of technological development now need to be embraced and accepted in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Sabu. And uh, we move to uh, Dr. Caroline. Uh, how prepared is your university in embracing the this unprecedented new learning from the management and staff and students' perspective? Dr. Caroline? Uh, Dr. Shaw, I think from the onset, the biggest challenge for most of the schools in the Philippines was to change the mindsets of the students because coming from a culture where education was delivered heavily the traditional way, we had to make sure that we're able to engage them first. Um, in convince them, find out um, the different ways by which we could reach out to them and tell them that, hey, um, online education is the way to go. It's safe, it's reliable, and you have to use online education or go flexible so that you can continue your education. So for us to be able to do that on the part of management, we always have to keep our eyes on the lookout for new technology. What is the new thing that we can bring into our campuses, that it can, we can bring to our curriculum, to, that we could bring for our students so that we're always a step ahead, not only a step ahead of the students, but a step ahead of everybody else. As you know, the, you know, the students right now, they're very technologically savvy. They can find ways by which they could, you know, um, work things around or game the system. So we have to make sure that um, everything, um, protections are in place, securities are in place, and that is something that we're always doing all the time. On top of that, um, we also have to make sure that training of faculty, as well as making sure that other faculty members from the young ones up to the more tenured or the senior ones are able to cope with the technological um, challenges that's required from them as they deliver um, the lectures. So they not should, they should not, aside from preparing their PowerPoints, they should be able to develop videos, high quality videos so that they could explain the subject matter clearly and that they could reach out to the students correctly. Otherwise, the students will get bored. Imagine if it's just a plain PowerPoint, there's no annotation, nobody's going to stick it out with you. So you have to find ways to engage them. And then to do that, you have to train your teachers very well. And at the same time, you also have to be mindful of everyone's needs. You know, it was a, a revelation for all of us when the students and the teachers started asking for mental health breaks. So we thought, wow, I'm mean, already at home and you're asking for those mental health breaks. And we realized that maybe it's because there's too much engagement that's going on in a way that's isolating at times because even if you see each other on Zoom, you're still by yourself at home. So that's something also that we had to factor in. So now we're doing a lot of um, health and wellness and mental um, seminars just to make sure that 
the needs of our students as well as our faculty is addressed. And then to make sure that we find ways to reach out to the students, like what Dr. Sabur said, um, we have our very strong mentoring program. We call it our chat program where our guidance counselors reach out to our students and make their one-on-one, one-on-one one -on -one interviews, one-on-one -on -one talks with their students just to make sure that um, they don't feel left out. So that's perhaps one of the challenges in online education. Um, as we try to make students learn, we also have to make sure that they feel the concern coming from the educational institutions. Um, we're, not, we're not far away, although there's a digital divide, we're still very accessible to them. So really there's a lot of challenges and as we go along, we learn. Every so often we do our surveys, we do our evaluations very frequently and we see it, and if we see that there's a lot of common issues that can be dealt with immediately, um, two or three days hence we, we make the change and we make the accommodations just to make sure that we're able to be as flexible to the needs of our students. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Caroline. Uh, Prof. Titi, uh, the same question is posed to you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Xiao. Okay. Um, in Malaysia, the first uh, MCO was in March 2020. And then uh, at that time, um, it was one month before our final exam. And normally, our, although, we are, uh, although we are running our program uh, online, okay, we, uh, the students are learning uh, via our learning management system, okay, and some of them are blended. Yeah, but uh, all this while, we have been having our exam uh, physical sit-in. But uh, due to the MCO, so when the first MCO was announced by the government, which is one month before the final exam, so uh, we quickly um, uh, make an action plan. Uh, how are we going to uh, have our final exam you know, without disrupting the uh, actual schedule? So this is where uh, from the innovation of the staff, you know, we, we come up with what we call the synchronous online final examination. In, in short, SOFI. So um, we we have uh, through the innovation yeah we have come up with a system um self developed yeah by our uh, uh, our own staff we come up with this uh, synchronous online final examination okay so um the, whereby the student yeah they they take the exam yeah using the learning management system uh, synchronously uh, wherever they are Okay, so that is one, and also we improvise our uh, other modes of fin uh, final examination by having a take-home exam, which uh, they are given uh, like uh, seven days or twenty-four hours, yeah, to uh, submit yeah their 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 answers. Okay, but uh, of course um, we have to look into yeah the uh, the the we we have to look at the um taxonomy you know of of the question the level of questions yeah so all this has to be done within uh, one month uh, so we what we can see is that yeah uh, the pandemic has uh, made the university come up with uh, various innovations yeah so other than um, our uh, final examinations yeah so we also have a uh, virtual convocation yeah so for 2020 uh we we conduct our convocation virtually yeah so which means that the student can be awarded their degree yeah without having to come to a physical convocation so everything be done uh virtually okay and we also have a virtual orientation yeah for our new students so all these yeah um this is to um to 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 help our students yeah to support our students yeah to make sure that their teaching and learning yeah will not be affected despite the 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 pandemic yeah so um there are many others um uh, uh initiative yeah for example 
uh, we improve our um, customer relation uh, management yeah because we need to do a lot of support yeah to the students yeah by having this customer relation management yeah we 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 can give yeah uh, a good service to our student continuously okay and of course um being an online uh, university yeah um flexibility yeah is the is the key uh, is the key word yeah in our education so despite uh, flexible learning yeah we cannot run away from the uh, quality of education okay so this is where we have to ensure our content yeah uh, to to make sure that our content are um up to the uh, are up to the standards yeah and with the uh, our learning management system yeah the student can learn at their own pace so on top of that they are being supported by uh, online tutorial and that is in terms of the delivery yeah so we we make sure that the online content in the in our learning management system would be able to help the student to manage their own learning and also to assess whether they achieve the learning outcomes or not yeah so we come up with what we call the self instructional materials yeah and now we uh one step further what we call as online self instructional material osim so that's where um the uh, the animation will come in the the learning management yeah uh, will come in uh, where the student would be able to assess yeah their own uh, learning pace yeah and of course um the three uh, the three items in teaching and learning which is the content uh, delivery and assessment yeah so uh, at the end of the semester yeah we assess the student with various mode either synchronously take home exam yeah and uh, we also have a uh, interview exam yeah because some of the subject requires uh, interviews yeah so we do that as well this is to ensure that the student yeah achieve the learning outcome so at the end of the day we measure the achievement of the learning outcomes of the student yeah and from there we identify what are further actions need to be taken to improve yeah our content delivery and also uh, assessment yeah so that is on the um, our innovation yeah in the implementation uh, of teaching and learning yeah but uh, of course in terms of administration yeah um when we now we are working online yeah uh, so we have to improvise yeah our our system um so which means that uh, by uh, doing uh, by making our system yeah uh, able to do uh, a certain task meaning that uh, from one action to another who's going to take the actions and so on yeah so we make sure that um our process yeah will not be um disrupted yeah despite uh we have to work from home yeah as uh, dr caroline mentioned just now yeah uh despite this covid and, and everybody working uh, at home yeah uh, and dr sabur also mentioned yeah i think um we can get things done uh, faster yeah because um we are working with our laptop our ipad yeah so we just all we need to do is just um switch on our laptop and our ipad uh, we can get things done sign approve yeah so everything uh, can be done more efficiently yeah but of course um as uh, dr karana mentioned just now yeah uh, the side effect can be mental fatigue yeah so that's also one question there yeah how do we address uh, mental fatigue so this is what i see uh, flexibility plays an important role yeah either to the staff or uh, to the students yeah so uh, we believe in um, flexibility yeah so but but, but um, at the end what is important is the outcome yeah so which means that every staff yeah they they have to uh, provide the report weekly report to their to the to the bosses you know what they have done yeah for the week and what what are the outcomes so weekly reporting yeah is required uh, from the staff 
So which means that we are now not being um, confined yeah, by the uh, office hours, let's say 9 to 5 or 8 to 4. Yeah, we can go, we can work. Sometimes at night, we open our email, answers email and so on. Yeah, and uh, do consultation with uh, postgraduate students and also students. Yeah, uh, it can be done at night. Yeah, normally I I did my consultation with my PhD students uh, at night because they are working and uh, during the days also we are busy with meetings. So, so I I can see that uh, by making it flexible, yeah, we can reduce the fatigue and feeling stress. You know. Uh, of working at home so um, I think uh, that's uh, what I see yeah and our implementation in AEU yeah uh, so we believe in flexibility yeah either on the staff and also on students yeah because our students they are working adults so they should be able to manage their own learning yeah and at their time anywhere because our our motto is actually um, flexibility yeah with our learning management system student can learn anywhere anytime okay, thank you uh, prof Tite. and uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, this uh, uh, webinar seems to fit the uh, theme of this uh, webinar that is unperturbed but we mutated stronger so i uh, i will pose the third question and uh, to uh, Dr. Caroline first, yeah, the, new, the move to new learning mainly by online only uh, classes for instruction prompted concerns about the quality of educational instruction provided remotely. Previous studies have warned that student performance, particularly for students who are already academically struggling, can seriously suffer in, in online courses. Other research found that up to 20% of college students have issues assessing effective technology, including working laptops and reliable high-speed internet. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to embed one of the questions from the audience uh, about the addressing the online fatigue. So, Dr. Caroline, you are also a medical doctor. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, um, Dr. Shaw. Um, well, how do we address in Fatima, what we did first, um, at the time um, the pandemic hit, I was also the president of the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities. So we knew that one of the big concerns for most of our students in the private sector would be accessibility to the internet. And we also knew that government would not have the funding to assist all the students for the internet connection and like some other countries like perhaps Malaysia where the government was perhaps able to provide some sort of funding for their internet. So what we did was we engaged the telecommunications companies and we asked directly what is the best offer that you could give for our students considering that we have this number of students and um, thankfully they created um, special packages so that um, in our particular school, so for 330 pesos, um, you get um, over 100 gigabytes. 330 pesos would be the equivalent of a dollar, more or less, and for a month, and you would get three, um, 100 gigabytes. And we also had to make sure that um, when our students use our learning management system, it will be whitelisted so that it will not cost, um, incur costs for them. So we talked to the telecommunications as well, and we asked um, if they could whitelist our learning management system, to which they did. So thank God um, we were able to address that. We also created um, some sort of um, in loans for our students, for their iPads, as well as for their laptops, so that they could avail the different devices in the university. But they, I think the students were able to get by just using their smartphones. So they, they settled with their smartphones um, in the conduct of education. So we also worked with the government in one way. Um, and luckily, the government addressed the needs of our students and they provided close to 300 million pesos as a relief package for um, the higher education sector which was divided equally among all the schools in the Philippines. It's a very small amount, but it's significant because at least of the private sector students, 
was able to benefit in one way or the other some form of government assistance. Um, so once you have your internet, the next thing to consider is, are you able to deliver your learning materials successfully, synchronously, or asynchronously? So like what I mentioned earlier, we recalibrated just to make sure that we're very, very sensitive to the needs of our students. So we were doing our synchronous lectures uh, given a strict number of minutes. At the same time, we gave allowances for their um, asynchronous lectures and assessments. With regards to um, fatigue, like I mentioned earlier, the mental fatigue is something that we had to contend with. We asked our teachers, number one, uh, you, you, you also have to put a limit to the amount of time that the students can contact you. Um, let's put a curve, technically some sort of a curfew. So uh, you, you also have to rest because you, otherwise the students will be reaching out to you at midnight and you have to be ready for the next day. So we said maybe a good time would be by 9 o'clock. Um, if a student would send a text or an email at 9, maybe the answer could be given the next day. And then we reached out to our students by having several sessions of our um, mental health seminars. And we, uh, we contacted several well-known um, doctors as well as um, ideas on how to mitigate um, the, the mental fatigue as well as the isolation that's brought about by um, continuous um, Zoom applications, Google Meets, and feeling um, out of place, even if you're in the company of others in a Zoom meeting room. So honestly, um, when we first opened our Zoom class, our um, discussion room, so our students, most of the chat messages asked for a GC. And at that time, I did not know what a GC meant. And I found out that GC meant group chats. So oh, that's what the student wanted, group chats, to be, in, to be able to engage with their classmates, even um, digitally in several groups. So you must be very sensitive to the needs of your students, just so that um, you can reach out to them as often as you can and in the best way that you can. So thank you, Dr. Shaw. Uh, uh, Prof. Titi, any, any uh, reaction from you? Uh, Prof. Titi, please unmute. Sorry, sorry. Okay, yes, um, in terms of uh, quality assurance, yeah, uh, of uh, 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 education or teaching and learning yeah so uh, we cannot we cannot run away of that yeah so as i mentioned just now um, the three major component in teaching and learning yeah uh, is very important yeah uh, the content uh, delivery and uh, assessment yeah web and of course uh, at the end of uh, after the assessment that is where we do the measurement and we need to do evaluation Okay, so based on the evaluation, which uh, which is the achievement of the learning outcomes, yeah, and uh, either at the course level or at the program level, yeah, that's where uh, we're going to evaluate and we're going to identify what are the actions yeah that we need to take in order to improve, yeah. So so um, despite uh, the COVID situation, yeah, we can um. We can uh, we can um, run away yeah from these three uh, elements yeah so the aspect of quality assurance uh, has to be maintained and in Malaysia um, the quality assurance is um, governed by Malaysian qualification agency yeah even uh, MQA yeah uh, despite COVID yeah their uh, accreditation exercise yeah uh, doesn't stop. So uh, MQA now, what they, they, they are implementing what they call as a uh, virtual audit, MQVA. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so now even the quality, quality assurance, yeah, how they're going to audit us yeah, has, uh, is going to be done virtually. 
So, so we as a higher education institution, we have to be prepared, yeah, with um all the evidences, yeah, whereby despite uh the current situation, the COVID situation, yeah, uh our implementation of teaching and learning would not sacrifice the quality assurance, yeah. So, um, and of course, uh, just now, um how I, i think we also uh, i would also like to share yeah um how do we support yeah our uh, students yeah um because uh, in terms of connectivity and device yeah since our student uh, enrolled with uh, asia e university they well aware that they must have the device and also the connectivity yeah because our mode of learning but of course uh, the monetary aspect uh, can be a problem Yeah, so AAU has come up what we call as um what 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 we call as AAU cares. Yeah, AAU cares whereby uh we give um discounts yeah to our to our new students and also to our uh, existing student. Yeah, um let's uh we we give discounts to them. Yeah, to this is to reduce their financial burden. Yeah, so although that will become a burden to AAU, yeah, but um, in this situation, I think every one of us, uh, we have to bear, uh, we have to share, yeah, the difficulties. Yeah, so the university also um uh, have to share the difficulties faced by the students. Yeah, so we call what uh as uh AAU cares. Yeah, by giving some discounts. Yeah, to our new students and also existing students, and in fact. Uh, we have a special discount uh, to the frontliners. Mm -mm. So if our students are the frontliners, like the nurses, you know, the the police, uh, so any frontliners, if they can prove that they are the frontliners, so we have a special discount even for the frontliners. Yeah. So of course, uh, this pandemic, yeah, uh, everybody. Uh, facing the difficulties yeah but uh, as dr sabur and dr caroline said that it is a blessing in disguise yeah because uh, because of this pandemic it makes every one of us uh, um, more prepared yeah for the digital learning uh, otherwise if if there is no pandemic then the enforcement should not be there the needs the urgent needs uh, on digital learning is not there you know and also it make our It makes our our staff yeah more innovative yeah we come up with uh, innovations yeah to improve the deliveries and also to improve uh, our uh, management process our administration administration process yeah uh, more efficiently so um, I think uh, that's from uh, AEU Prosia. Uh, okay, thank you, Prof. Tite. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Well, Doctor. Uh, Sabu Khan. Uh, well, thank you. So I hope that everybody already discussed a lot of the point, which I don't need to repeat. And definitely, as a last point, Dr. Titik is mentioned because this pandemic is also giving a great opportunity for look after the all quality assurance compliances, because very easily, very precisely, all of the component we can look after. And our IQSC, that is quality assurance team, is also working very precisely, and they are very happy to look to find out the all of the pros and cons, and they took the proper solution. And again, as uh, I think Carolina is also mentioned that the group chat, uh, as I already mentioned earlier, because the student was very active to participate in the open discussion and especially the forum, and it is also one of their area because you know that, that they fail to participate in the physically to the coming to the university. So at least this forum giving them some. Confidence to tie up with their friend, and even that you see the student those who also took the enrollment it, due to this pandemic time. I think they are very unlucky. I should say that very very unlucky because they are not seeing their friend face to face. So they are they are making their networking friendship the virtual friendship. So that is that was strictly restricted on the group chat or group discussion or maybe using the some social networking. And it's true that everyone is also discussing the mental health because health matter also need to be looked after this very seriously due to this pandemic time. At our university, we also employed some few doctor who should look after the online uh, suggestion or mentoring to the student. And our psychologist is also working 
uh, very hard i should say that they are also looking at the mental health because as i already mentioned few minutes back because our teacher is also talk with the parents directly because how the parents is also cope up with the system because sometimes you know the parents is also curious that their son their daughter earlier they are going to the outside they are playing they are gossiping with other people but due to this pandemic they cannot meet with their friend they are not going to the outside as they were doing earlier so this pandemic times it is also another indication that the student also need to look after about their mental health physical health and even the, the lot of the guidelines we also provide from our system repeatedly and i should share also with you because our cultural activities you know the lot of the cultural competition we organize for the virtual student are they are doing they are uh, debating they are dancing they are uh, you know that's a lot of cases they are performing their activities from their home and sometimes i am also surprised because some of the video when i am seeing the, it cannot be believed that they are not in the campus they are the way they already design themselves i think it looks like that they are in the campus and even that our one of the department is called the architect department department of architecture department of multimedia and creative art they are also doing lot of the activities how they should utilize the waste in a creative way as a value addition product as a value added product so these sorts of activities they also perform through their house and they would show it to the online so if you see anyone is online i think they can believe it they performing these activities through their in their own premises or from their home uh, so again uh, i should say that, that this uh, pandemic is also giving the another message to the everyone even we people i think the teacher management everyone the immune system we need to develop our immune system i think earlier people was very reluctant about the immune system they don't they don't bother what food they are taking so these times also we are trying from our university to giving them some message to our student these 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 sorts of food will be will develop your immune system you should be careful and our uh, our, our department department of uh, medical center they are doing some uh, video documentary for the student when you are talking please try to walk you try to move inside your house if your house is very small does not matter but don't try to sit long time uh, because it can be making some problem so this is uh, i should say that uh, it was very tough to give the lesson earlier and at the same time we also organize as as uh, i should say that the uh, dr titik is also mentioned uh, you see the due to cause of, because our student are very emotional we also send to organize the virtual convocation so student they are not consider it very very positively they thought that we are depriving them because you know the convocation like is a big festival for the student because after four years of education this is the other one time so everybody is sending us the message we don't like to me we don't we don't like to miss this physical convocation please we are ready to do it after one year after two years it doesn't matter please don't deprive us so but we face the problem about the foreign foreign student because we have more than 100 foreign student so luckily the foreign student is more eager to organize it in the virtually so we organize the virtual convocation for the foreign student and of, of course the few of the student due to cause of their internship their degree is also hanging so we organize few uh, few internship also through the virtually and i'm sure that you will agree with me because the virtual inter internship is now the appropriate tools because this pandemic is giving us the lesson that we don't need to go to the physically to one country or another country we don't need to go to the office also physically rather we can perform all activities if we are equipped with the technology and if we know the technique of the technology because it is very easy because especially the I should say the manual job. I think manual job or labor job. We need to go to the physical rest of the job. We can perform to the virtually. So that's why in this pandemic we organize a lot of this virtual internship also. Even the student and the parents and the people, industry people is also they are very happy to see the internship. They told that yes, the way they already organize the internship look like is more professional than what they did in the physically. Because sometimes the physically they are very reluctant. They make some copy and paste. They are not very serious. But virtually they are very serious. Because they know that they have to face to the online. So there was no secrecy and there was no way. And you know the plagiarism and a lot of the things we can easily identify now due to cause of the software, due to cause of the technology. So online proctoring, online tools, a lot of, lot of the effective tools we're using between this time. But I must say again, because this pandemic is giving a great lesson, uh, I'm sure that the health sector need to be addressed properly. And of course, uh, mental health, immune system psychological health and lot of the lot of this effective uh, effective measure we need to need when the campus will be also open and i'm sure that uh, we also organize some medical 
uh, facilities inside our campus because we understood because the when the campus will be open the some student need to be take care about instantly through their medical support from the campus so this is uh, i should say that as a uh, all of the distinguished guest is already mentioned a lot of the other points so i don't like to repeat so i should say only the let's uh, hope to the better future let students should see their university in the better university and i am sure that this pandemic is also giving a, another very good message to the, all of the academicians especially the management how much you are capable to cope up with the system how much you are really friendly with your student how much you are really friendly with your teacher because as uh, uh, dr caroline is also mentioned and dr titik is also mentioned because 9 to 5 is now working you see every time 24 hours you have to be alert but definitely true you, you need to you need to be develop some system but at the same times you need to be aware that when the necessity does not follow any rules just as so before concluding i give you one example day before yesterday 10:45 i got a one whatsapp message from my five senior management sir we need a one emergency meeting with you i say it is almost midnight well if you are agree we are ready and it's fine i'm okay so 11 o'clock we organize a one meeting and it finish in the 12 o'clock so this is called the technology this is called the beauty of the technology and this pandemic is also giving us a one good message that you have to be alert in every time and i understood because the what because they, they this five person they talk each other somehow they are 10 30 they come to one conclusion they thought that they need to talk with me so these sorts of mental preparedness is coming through this pandemic and i am sure that our student our teacher everybody is now they are they are also thinking this and they are also set up their mindset the 9 to 5 is not working in the near future we should be alert due to cause of technology always every times wherever you are philippine it is it is two hour ahead malaysia you are two hour ahead but it doesn't matter we can meet whenever we need it thank you very much and we shall always thank you very much uh, uh, dr sabu khan and we come to the last question and also time is catching up uh colleges and universities are struggling more than ever with severe budget problems due to pandemic we all know college can be expensive forcing parents and students to go into debt just to pay for it the new learning however has spurred students to seek for reduced tuition fees how does your management mitigate mitigate between the acute budget problems faced by the university and the demand for reduction in fees uh prof tite Uh, Amir, please. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Xiao. Um, yes, as I mentioned just now, uh, we have to balance the two. Yeah. Uh, we have to think about the welfare of our students. Yeah. The difficulties that they face, and of course, the universities are facing difficulties as well. Uh, also, universities are um, uh, affected by by uh, the financial uh, problems. Yeah. uh implication out of the the covid situation and as i mentioned just now uh aeu we we come up with you know since um the first lockdown yeah uh, we introduce what we call aeu cash whereby we give um a discount in the tuition fees yeah uh, for our existing students and also the new students yeah and uh it still carry on uh, until this semester and this for this semester we introduce another um incentive yeah to the frontliners yeah so whereby um special for the frontliners yeah we give a special discount uh for them as well yeah and of course um by uh all the innovations yeah in our uh process uh administrations yeah um our day to day activities yeah uh, whereby um many of the uh, many of the uh, methods being done uh by the system yeah um so we can uh, we can reduce yeah our uh, expenditure yeah so um the university uh, aware that uh, we have to reduce our expenditure yeah we have to um be more careful yeah with our expenditure um so that you know um the 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 revenue yeah and also the expenditure would not be um uh, on uh, low i mean um uh, lopsided 
you know, on on one side. Yeah. So of course, uh, at the management level, yeah, you know, we have to look into, um, the financial, yeah, you know, uh, to ensure that, uh, the university, yeah, you know, would be able to to survive, yeah, you know, despite the the economic problems, yeah, you know, faced by the countries and also the world, yeah. You know, but um, at the same time, of course, um due to the to due to our flexibility yeah in our uh, learning style yeah in our delivery modes uh, the teaching and learning yeah um we are affected but um in terms of uh, getting new students yeah uh, we we are not affected that much yeah because of our flexibility because uh, the student still feel that um they are the education life needs to continue yeah despite the situation because uh, they cannot wait you know um covid can uh, will not be as a uh, cannot become yeah as a barrier for them yeah to improve their uh the academic uh, qualification yeah this is because with education yeah the student realize that with education they can improve yeah their their living yeah and also uh they can improve the uh, economic you know of their economic conditions of their their se themselves and also their family so that's prof okay thank you very much uh, dr sabu uh, we we are also running short of time to any uh, you know uh, thank you thank you dr seo i think uh mm -hmm. i'm also agree with dr titik we are also giving some uh, waiver and especially we call this covid waiver we call it COVID mm -hmm. scholarship or COVID waiver. We're giving this lot of opportunity to our student. And we understood our student is also affected, as I already mentioned. And as a private university, we have also some limitation because the, usually the private university is not getting any single piece of benefit from the government. Even that, despite of this uh, pri private university, don't get any support from the government. We are giving them some, uh, you know, the bad and some source of tax also to the government. But anyway, uh, we are, we are, Thanks to the Almighty, because with the support of our student, our teacher, uh, we are really running well. And uh, definitely our teacher was also very much uh, cooperative with the student. And we agree with this uh, situation. Definitely there should be some case to case. We are considering some case to case, some benefit, because some of the students really they are facing seriously effect. And at the same time, we also implement luckily earlier this COVID that every student is ensured that insurance you know that if their parents is losing any job or anything problem uh, then they will get the full full insurance coverage so this one is also very effective considering this COVID-19 uh, and also I should say that um, you know uh, due to cause of this uh, COVID-19 uh, we are finding that some of our admin some of our teacher they are performing very well they are, as I already mentioned, because earlier they are taking class 9 to 4 or 9 to 2 p.m., but now they are very much uh, focused for taking more load. So I'm happy to share with you that due to this pandemic, is more than 200 staff, we already give them the increment and promotion, where other people giving the discount salary and reduce their salary, but we are giving the more benefit to them because they're seeing their performance. So this is this is why I should say that with all together it's a team, and this, and um, the student is also very much I should say that uh, we are really grateful to our student. They are also working as a very strong team. They also support it to their beloved university, and definitely we are still we consider that uh, def considering the student effect and case to case scenario. Of course, uh, we will be very positive for giving some discount and from giving them some benefit. So at least they should complete their education. But I'm sure that, uh, of course, uh, due to cause of the financial barrier, uh, we don't trust that no student should be uh, should be hanging to complete their education. This is one of our commitment from our university. There's a lot of facility we already introduced from our university. So thank you. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Sabu Khan, uh, Prof. Karen. Any? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I say uh, I share the same sentiments as Dr. Titik and Pre President Sabur. So similarly, uh, we have to do a heroic balancing of our income that we derive from a shortfall of tuition revenues, while at the same time, we have to address the reduced fees, the reduced intake coming from our students. So 
I would say, you know, to all the students out there, now is the best time to continue your education because you get your education at a much reduced rate considering that we're not charging for um, excesses such as the laboratories which are not offered now, some of the extracurricular activities. So easily a student can get as much as 15 to 20 percent discount on their tuition. So if you continue with your education, you're able to learn as you move along, earn your degree at a faster rate at your convenience. And at the same time, um, you, uh, you're able to move faster be because you're able to choose your schedules, you're able to choose your teachers, and at the same time, tuition really is cheaper. Um, like what um, Dr. Sabura is saying and Dr. Titik. And, and we also continue with our scholarships. And amazingly, um, we saw that we have um, students who are performing better online. So there's a lot more of our scholars coming in. And for us, that's a big um, help to the students as well as to their parents. So I guess um, that's my petition to all students, accept the current status now that online or flexible learning is the best way to go to continue your education. And we, it's guaranteed because in spite of the fact that uh, there's a shortfall in the revenues of universities, we continue with our accreditations. We continue with our certifications, certifications from ISO just to make sure that we're guaranteeing that online education is still of good standards. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Caroline. And uh, we have come to the end of the uh, uh, webinar. And uh, most of the questions uh, from the audience has already, has already been embedded into the main questions. And uh, uh, and thank you for the, um, uh, Dr. Caroline, Dr. Shabu, and Prof. Tite for sharing uh, your first-hand experience in mitigating the uh, impact of uh, the unprecedented COVID pan pandemic on your institutions. Uh, we, just like many of us, we expect only about two, two or three months, but uh, somehow it's ex been extended mm. up to a year, or probably more along than that. But uh, mm. well, I'm very glad to hear that the uh, all the speakers from the universities, uh, that uh, you have emerged uh, uh, stronger than, uh, than before. So we hope that uh, this new learning uh, will make us uh, more uh, more uh, ready in in facing the uh, coming future and so on and uh, with that i would like to thank once again to all these uh, participants who have uh, 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 been with us in the uh, throughout the seminar uh, webinar and also uh, thank you to the speakers uh, for having uh, devoted your time to be with us so once again i would like to thank uh, Dr. Caroline, Dr. Sabu Khan, and Prof. Titi. And uh, last message to all the audience and the uh, speakers, uh, stay safe. And hopefully the COVID-19 will not last uh, longer than expected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Yeah.